what makes you uncomfortable. I'm not talking about your wedgie or your loafers. I'm talking about your comfort zones. Welcome to Jamie Dove Florida Pottery. And in this episode, I'm gonna talk about breaking comfort zones. As humans, we are creatures of habits, good, bad, or indifferent. We all have something that we do because it's comfortable. It's in our zone. It's something we know, it's safe. The problem is when you stay in that zone, you don't grow. You just do the same thing every time and never challenge yourself. You gotta do something different. Change the paradigm. Sometimes even the slightest change can bring inspiration resulting in huge growth. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about getting outside my comfort zone on three levels. When it comes to throwing clay on the wheel, I have my usual suspects. Cups, bowls, vases, urns, all open form vessels. I haven't thrown a bottle or a closed form in years, and I need to put some time into practicing those forms. Also, I'm not that practiced in composite pieces, and that's where you join multiple pieces to create one larger pot. My college professor, John Jensen, was awesome at it. He made some phenomenal stuff, and he made it look easy. He also had amazing patience and his own studio as where I didn't, so I never really followed through with any consistency over the years, which ultimately results in attempts like these wonky looking things. But the first thing I wanna talk about is the type of clay I use. Yep, something that simple. I like using high water clays, speckled brownstone. There's something about the warmth the clay has when it's fired to cone five, six, and it looks awesome naked. I like the grog content and the iron content. It throws well and I've used it for years. Well, until a few days ago, the day I decided to go buy clay, they were out of speckled brownstone. Now, on the outside, it looked like I was cool with it. On the inside, there was a panic situation happening and I was dazed for a moment. I had to make a decision. Do I walk away without clay or do I commit to 500 pounds of something new? Now, I actually thought of sampling a whole bunch of different clays, but then I had a flashback to Dunkin' Donuts in Ocean City, Maryland, back in the summer of what, 1984, and I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Long story short, I got 500 pounds of high water as Ellen Buff. Looking at the tiles, it was much lighter than I'm used to, and it has no grog. It has a different feel and a different look. Okay, great, let's give it a shot. The first thing I have to do is to prepare the clay. I'll cut and weigh the clay, wedge it, and ball it up so I can throw it on the wheel. This piece I'm making is the first bottle I've thrown in a while. Now, once I realized I was going to throw a closed form, I took my time with it, making adjustments to accommodate the neck. Using a new clay for the first time is kind of weird. I'm not used to how smooth the clay is in my hands. Here I put a little too much torque on the neck, and I twist it a bit. That just means I'll have to trim it off and bring more clay up. Then using the needle tool again, I'll trim the uneven lip. I use a metal rib to clean up and shape the body of the bottle. I use a trowel to remove the bottle from the bat. In this part of the video, I'll show you how I made a two-part composite urn. The first few steps are pretty elementary. I start out by throwing two matching bowls. For the first bowl, I just threw a bowl. I left a little bit more clay in the body than I normally do. I've had thinness issues when making composite pieces in the past, so this is me being cautious. On the second bowl, I periodically check the bowl with calipers to make sure that the rims of the bowl are the same outside diameter. After letting the two halves firm up for a day, I prepare the rims for blending. I thoroughly score the rim and add slip to the bowl on the wheel. I have left the bowl attached to the bat for stability. I carefully take the other half and line it up with the half on the wheel. I very gently press them together to create a bond. I use a wire cutoff tool to remove the bat from the clay. Now that I've removed the bat, I can get a full view of the body and a better idea of what I'm going to do. I use a trimming tool I made from an old drill bit to trim away some excess clay around the top. Using the edge of the trimming tool, I cut down through the clay. Using a sponge, 
I dampen the clay a bit. Using a wood rib, I can press the two halves together on the outside. While on the inside of the pot, I'm applying slight pressure with my fingers, which blends the clay together at the joint. I add some slip to throw with because the clay doesn't absorb the moisture as fast. I work on the shoulder and the neck, bringing more clay up from the body. I reach down to the bottom and I bring up some of that extra clay too. I spend a few more minutes giving this vessel a nice rounded belly, soft shoulders, and a smooth collar. I let it sit out overnight to firm up a bit so I could trim some more. Using my homemade trimming tool, I clean up the base while it's still attached to the wheel. Using the wire tool, I cut the pot from the bat. I flip the pot, center it, and then begin to trim the bottom. I start off with my drill bit trimming tool, but then I go to a wire tool to trim the foot of the pot. I use a metal rib to clean and smooth the pot before taking it off the wheel. Using a damp sponge, I go over the entire piece, wiping away all the throwing and work lines. After letting the piece firm a bit more, I make a line around the shoulder where I want to put the lugs. Now it's just like making coffee cups. Score the clay, I add some slip, I score the lug, line it up to the piece, and press firmly. I use a wooden tool and some extra pieces of clay to add some strength to the lugs. After doing that a few more times and adding my maker's mark and signature, it's time to let this guy dry. Now this is the composite piece you saw me make, and I am pretty pleased with it so far. And I tell you what, I am really excited to see how this thing turns out. Looking forward to it. This is the little bottle I made at the beginning of the video. Yep, I trimmed the bottom down and I gave it a, a nice foot as well as making it uh, a cool little little stopper that I can just put in there. Put my little stamp thing on there, but it's a cool little bottle. Absolutely cool little bottle. Let me put this guy right over there and oh my goodness. So anyway, that's three things I've done outside my comfort zone. Were they huge monumental changes? No, but I challenged myself. And the next time I'll do a little more and a little more and then ultimately a little more. And I think that every time you sit down to create, there should be some kind of takeaway from it. Not just a bunch of pots or inventory, but some kind of knowledge. Um, knowledge that'll help you further down the road. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, hit like. Share the video with someone who could benefit from it. Leave a comment if you have a question or you want to see me demonstrate something. And once again, thank you very much for watching the video. Go have fun. Go play in the clay. Take care.